What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and Apple has released iOS 17 Beta 7 to developers, and hopefully in a bit they'll release it to public beta testers. I'll be showing you what is new inside of iOS 17 in this video, and for your convenience, I've provided timestamps below so you can easily navigate to any point of this video. Started with the update size, it came in at 686 megabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro right here, which is smaller than what we have been getting lately. You really should not expect much from an iOS Beta 7 update, but there are a couple of things that we can talk about today. First, let's also discuss what else Apple has released. They've also released iPadOS 17 Beta 7, tvOS 17 Beta 7, watchOS 10 Beta 7, HomePod Software 17 Beta 6, and macOS Sonoma Beta 6, and Xcode 15 Beta 7. I'll make a video about macOS Sonoma Beta 6 and watchOS 10 Beta 7 pretty soon, so stay tuned for those. Alright, let's take a look at the software. If we were to go into settings, general, and then about, our build number here is 21A5319A. We have an A at the end of the build number, which is indicating that Apple has compiled this build one time and it worked successfully the first time. There's a common misconception that it means how smooth it is, otherwise every last beta would have an A. We had a couple of last betas in iOS 16 where they were C. That just means that it took two times to compile and I guess there wasn't a major issue so. And real fast, I ran a couple of Geekbench tests so we can compare them to beta 6. On beta 6, I got a 2641 on the single core and on beta 7, I got a 2628 on the single core. Little decrease but as long as this is a huge drop, it doesn't matter. Multi-core matters a little bit more, but still, it is a little minor drop because on beta 6, we got a 68.22, but on beta 7, we got a 67.71. This can drop a little bit more than single core. Performance should be just fine. It isn't that big. And this could also vary depending on what the conditions are. For example, if you're in a hotter room or something, battery health is lower. For example, these will vary depending on what the conditions are. All right, now let's see what is new inside of iOS 17 beta 7. The first thing is with our phone app. If we were to go into our keypad right here, you're going to notice that we now have the end call button in the center right here, as before was right here, and hide keypad used to be right here. That just looks a whole lot better, and I'm glad Apple has changed this. Now, the next thing is a new thing that I can't show you, but I can explain. If you flip the silent switch on your iPhone, you're going to feel a brand new vibration right here, so it feels so much better. It almost feels like that a button should be here, and when you press the button, that's what the haptic would be. Hmm... I guess Apple wants this haptic to be on all iPhones instead of just whatever iPhone would have a button, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Now the next thing is inside our health app, and then next if we go down to browse and mental well-being, and then scroll down to logging your emotions and mood, and then press begin, and then press next, you're gonna see that Apple has made the animation here a lot faster, and it's just so much more snappier here now. I really like it a lot. It's almost like that Apple really wants to show this off at the iPhone event. In fact, I would bet money that Apple will show this off at the iPhone event. Apple just wants to tweak this to be perfect for some reason. And it feels very perfect here. I don't see anything else Apple could change here with the animation. And yeah. Unfortunately, we did not get any other changes the Apple community can find right now. If there is a big significant change, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video this weekend. If you'd like to see some changes and not be bored by iOS, you could take a look at my macOS video since there are some pretty big changes there that I could show you there. Now let's talk about bugs. I have no major issues, battery life seems to be very good and everything, and it's a little bit lower today since I had to have the camera app open for a cross country thing today. So that drained a little bit of the battery, and I might have accidentally tapped the phone a few times, which would use a little bit of battery, but battery should be really good here. If you take a look at the beginning of this video, you can see what my battery was at before. But there's one thing I'd like to show you. If I were to do this, you're gonna see that we still have the choppy animation right here. I'm guessing Apple's not gonna fix it at this point. Maybe they'll fix it in a 16.1. We had a kind of a similar issue last year, and that was fixed in iOS 16.1. So maybe 17.1 will fix this issue once and for all. Who knows at this point. But other than that, performance feels really good. I would highly recommend updating 
rating if you haven't. And it feels so much snappier than Beta 6 for some reason, despite this being very similar to Beta 6. Now, should you update your iPhone to iOS 17 on your daily driver? I've been daily driving iOS 17 since Beta 1, and at this point, it feels like a smooth release, surprisingly. Evie gave me this after iOS 17 has came out, and I did not take a look at the iOS version right here. I would have guessed that this was the smooth release. Now, we do still have that notification issue right here, but that has been in the smoothest version of iOS since iOS 16.4. If that issue is still there, then I guess Apple will just go on with it. And the reason why this update had, wasn't so big was because Apple's already working on iOS 17.1. Most of the engineers there are working on that. The ones that work on features and the ones that work on bug fixes are still working on iOS 17.0. So if you're wondering about bugs and everything like that, you don't really have to worry. I would say go ahead and update if there's a feature you really want to take advantage of inside of iOS 17. Now what is next for Apple? If we took a look at our calendar app right here, I would say that we're gonna get one more beta of iOS 17 before the final release to fix up any final issues. Maybe the notification scroll issue, but I kind of doubt it at this point. Apple seems to have been liking these Tuesday releases this year, so I'm guessing it will be on the 29th. And then after that, unless there's a very big issue, Apple's not gonna release another beta here on the week of the fourth, most likely on the fifth, if there would have been a beta. What I think Apple's gonna do is after this beta comes out, there's gonna be an RC on the week of the 11th, what, right after the iPhone event. And I'm gonna guess that's on the 13th right here. And then I'm gonna bet my money that it will release to everyone here on the 18th. Apple has been liking these, doing these smooth major releases lately on the closest Monday after the RC. But yeah, let me know your experience down below about Beta 7. Let me know if you have any other remaining issues. And yeah, that's it. That's all I'd like to say about Beta 7. Pretty solid release, feels very smooth. However, it's a little boring on the feature side. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!